Heart, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. For those of you who have been living under a rock, uh, Sarah J. Mass has written this amazing high fae adult fantasy series called A Court of Thorns and Roses. In the first trilogy, we follow Feyre Arcanon as she journeys into the fey world and kind of finds herself and her strength and her love. This is the first book in an extension of that world where we follow Feyre's sister Nesta. I have probably been waiting for this book since the second book came out, A Court of Mist and Fury, so a long time, so it kind of feels surreal to have this in my hands right now, and I'm so excited to take you guys along with me on this reading journey. I do want to quickly preface this vlog by saying that the vlog portion will not have spoilers. I'm going to try really hard not to say anything about what's going on in the book, but more focus on my feeling and the writing and the character development. But at the end of this vlog, I will be doing a spoiler-filled review just to get out my thoughts and my feelings and talk to you guys about it. So I will make that very clear at the end. If you haven't read this book yet and you just kind of want to watch me go through it, that's fine. I will say at the end, this is now the spoiler part and you can turn it off there. I cannot, however, promise that I won't spoil the first three books in this series. Those three books have been out for a while, so I feel okay spoiling them in this vlog. But if you have not read any of the books in this series and are planning to, maybe this is not the video for you. I have a bunch more you can check out. This book is a behemoth. I think it's like 700 pages, which is actually short, thinking of Sarah J. Mass's books. They are, tend to be on the longer side, but it's just, I'm just so excited. I absolutely love Nesta, and I love Cassian, and I think it's just gonna be such an amazing book and I'm so excited. And to say that my expectations are high wouldn't be an understatement. I do have very high expectations for Sarah J Mass's writing just because I tend to click with it very well. So I'm just so excited to dive into it. So that is exactly what we are going to do. I don't have a lot of plans today, so I plan to use the majority of it to read this book. We do have a winter storm advisory for tonight, so I do have to go to Target just to get some batteries and some non-perishable foods and stuff just in case we lose power tomorrow though honestly that wouldn't be the worst thing I'd just light some candles and read some more but yeah that's kind of the plan for right now to just start this book which I'm so excited to do and I'm kind of vamping right now because I don't know what else to say except let's get started one thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that I am planning on annotating as I read this book. I think annotating is a great way to think critically about the books we are reading. I have five colored tabs and I assigned each of them a subject. So I have one for romance, one for quotes that I love, one for things that are sad, one for things that are shocking, and one for things that are funny. Hey guys, so I just wanted to give you an update. I'm about 100, a little bit over 100 pages into A Court of Silver Flames. Today has been a lot busier than I expected it to be. We just got word that the entire campus is closing down tomorrow due to the impending ice storm. So that's great. So there's like a real chance we might lose power. So I was out getting like a portable battery and some water and just some other things just in case our power does go out. Um, but some of my classes have actually already been canceled for tomorrow, which means more time to read. 
Going over my thoughts on the book about 100 pages in, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. The thing that I love the most about it is that we are finally seeing Nesta. Nesta has kind of been this pain in the ass for the past three books. She was first known as kind of a negligent sister, prejudice against Faye, and honestly just quite honestly a bitch at some times. But in this book we can really see how all of the trauma of the past few years has really affected her. I mean essentially this first part of the book we are seeing Nesta at the end of all of this hardship that she's endured and she is broken and she is taking all of her anger out on the world onto her family and the people she loves most. She is pushing people away and it's honestly quite sad to read about. I've always thought Nesta was kind of a misunderstood character. I mean, first she deals with a mother who died, a father who emotionally abandoned her, and now she is living in this new world where it's essentially she had all her control taken away. She was this strong woman who was, yes, living in poverty, but now she is a high fae, but that wasn't her choice. She has had a lot of things taken away from her, and now she kind of is pushing that resentment back out onto the people who love her the most. So just kind of seeing Nesta broken like that, it's really difficult. Um, so I hope we're getting to the part soon where we start to see that kind of start to heal. Um, but I'm really loving it. I'm loving the interactions with her and Cassian. I'm loving seeing Feyre and Reese together and all of the um, inner circle together. It's just really wonderful to be back with these characters and into this world. It's such a special feeling. So this is probably the last time I can update you tonight. In a few minutes, I start tutoring. I'm working with a really cool program this year where once a week I tutor third graders in their literacy and math. So that starts in a bit. And then I have another meeting from seven to nine. So it's a really busy night. Once again, hopefully more classes will be canceled tomorrow and I will have more time to devote to reading. So I will check back in with you guys later. While the power was still on, I would give you guys an update on A Court of Silver Flames. I am on page 238, so a good quarter of the way through the book. I'm definitely not reading this as fast as I usually do other books, but I think that's mostly because I'm really trying to absorb everything and get every single detail that I can out of this. It is just so brilliant. We finally got to some spicier scenes and Sarah J Mass delivered on those. I am so happy um, and I know that there's more to come so I'm really looking forward to those. We're finally kind of getting into the plot, the meat of the story I think. We're finally starting to go on a journey with the characters. I think up until this point it has been a lot about Nesta and her trauma and dealing with it and I do think Sarah J Maas is portraying mental health in a really great way so props to her for that but now we're kind of getting into okay now there is an impending conflict let's go see if we can try to prevent it from happening so that's kind of what's happening right now there's a journey and I am really happy with it there's been a really good mix of things that are really sad and just like sorrowful and also really funny moments so I'm like the balance that I'm getting in this book so far yeah I just really love it and I'm just having like the best time reading it but yeah really for the rest of the day I'm just planning on reading and hopefully finishing either today or tomorrow tomorrow but at some point I do need to take a break because I do have homework to do just because I have no classes today it doesn't mean my professors gave us a break on work to do so I have to do some discussion forums and some other menial tasks like that just a few other small things I want to do in between the reading but yeah today is just mostly going to be devoted to consuming this book and really just trying to get the most out of it this book it's just I'm so happy like I'm so happy to be reading this right now this, this is a long ass book. I think 
I didn't remember just how long Sarah J Mass's books were. I think the last time I read a book this size, it was her other book, A House of Earth and Blood. So I'm on page like 400 right now and I'm like, there is so much book left. I'm not bored in any way. I'm not like struggling to get through it. I'm just like marveling at how much more there still is after so much has already happened. And so much has happened. I'm just, I'm in awe of it. It's so good. And I just want to consume it, but there's like so much to consume. Um, but I'm really happy reading it. Today has just been like a weird day mentally. As much as I love having nothing to do, I also thrive off a schedule. So just sitting and reading while therapeutic and good for my introvert itself, it also has me feeling like I've been so unproductive. I don't know, it's like a weird feeling, but that's nothing against this book. This book is amazing and I love it and I could just read it forever. And honestly, it does feel like I've been reading it forever, so it works out. I think I'm gonna need to like recharge soon because I'm like on my last bit of energy. I've like already taken a nap today. So it definitely might be time for some more hot chocolate. I'm a big hot chocolate girl. So definitely might get some of that and then keep reading. I don't know if I'm going to finish this today. I honestly think I might finish it tomorrow. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool to like take three days to finish a book. Uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And that is the end of this update. You were the laughter early in the morning. Down in the kitchen, watching TV You were the music that led me to the sixth string And now it's been so long since I've heard you sing I looked up to you, brother Even when you lost your way Madness of New York City. Oh, you found her, and now I know there's hope for me. I'm just updating you guys every hundred pages so I got to the 500 mark and the story just took a turn for the depressing um I cried a little bit I'm not gonna lie it's just I think that recovery is a really rocky slope and I really like how Sarah J Mass is portraying it as that we start off with Nesta kind of broken down and angry at the world we see her through different things starting to get better a little bit and kind of open herself back up to the world but recovery is not a straight line and we just had a down moment and it was a really bad down moment and I'm just kind of like I'm feeling it all like right here um yeah I'm just feeling it all it's a lot it's a lot but it's so good earlier I don't know if you guys saw but I was writing in this little handy notebook it says it is written in the stars I just picked it up at Target um, but I decided I wanted to write down my thoughts as I was reading this book. So I've kind of been um, penning down anytime I feel some strong emotions about the book to just mark the page numbers and a few thoughts about it. This way, I think like when I'm done reading it, I can kind of look back on this for my review and also just for the future. I can look back and see literally my train of thought as I'm reading this book. So that's something I think I might do for future books because I love my reading journal, but I don't really write about the books in detail in my reading journal. It's more for tracking, um, but I am really excited to like use this more often in the future. So it is currently 5.30, which means I'm probably gonna make dinner like within the hour. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna make yet, but I don't know. I think I can finish this tonight if I like really try, but we'll see how that goes. I might stop at like the 600 page mark and reserve the last 100 pages for tomorrow when I can really like focus on it instead of just kind of like ending tonight and then going to bed. I kind of want to like finish it and give you guys my like coherent thoughts and not my sleepy thoughts. But yeah, I am just like very much very emotional right now. I don't know. I'm like tired and emotional from this book. So we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the day takes us.
hope you know what was <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to a section I'd like to now call Shelby's final thoughts. I have just finished this beautiful book like an hour ago and I've taken some time to go get lunch and like process my thoughts before coming back here to share my final reviews with you. I gave this book five stars. I don't know how I could give it anything else. I just loved the writing and the character development and the story development and the portrayal of mental health and trauma. It was all so well done. I don't know what else I can give it to fully express my emotions. Honestly, I'd like to give it like an a thousand out of 10. But yeah, 10 out of 10, five stars, amazing. Now we are going to get to the spoiler part of this vlog. So if you have not read A Court of Silver Flames yet, goodbye, uh, come back when you've read it and we can discuss in the comments. Um, and if you've read it and you wanna stay and hear my spoilery thoughts, let's get to it. For me, I kind of split this book up mentally into a few parts and I kind of described it earlier, but I think of the first part as Nesta at rock bottom. We see Nesta kind of just being pulled through life by her own inhibitions. All she is doing is drinking and dancing and just trying to block out the pain that she's been feeling over the loss of her father. And that's really the core of this entire book is Nesta feeling guilty about her father dying. And I think that is like the center of a lot of the pain that she's feeling. Then when she gets ordered by Feyre and Rysan to live in the House of Wind, you see this other stage of uh, the book, which is the healing aspect. You see her kind of resisting training at first, but Cassian makes a deal with her and they start training and you can see how it actually really helps her. And I really like this because for a lot of people dealing with trauma, like exercising and training and fighting, that is something that helps. And I thought that it occurred in a really natural way for her. I really like how she started to like open herself back up again with training, starting to feel more confident, starting to feel more like herself than she's ever been. I thought that was really amazing. And I love that she started to make friends. I loved the characters of Gwyn and Emery. I thought they were great additions and you can kind of see that Nesta's more or less broken the bonds with her her sisters, Feyre and Elaine, and you see her kind of work back that confidence by becoming friends with um, Emery and Gwyn. So I thought that was really amazing. And most of all, we get to see Nesta and Cassian's relationship. And I thought that was amazing how it was just kind of physical at first because it's always been kind of physical with them ever since they first interacted in the second book. It was just always like that pull together, that enemies to lovers intensity. And we finally get to see that play out on the page. And when it happened, it, it happened, you guys. Like it was raw and dirty and real and just so indicative of both of their characters. The sex evolved honestly as their relationship evolved and I thought that was just such a beautiful thing. I just thought every part of this book was wonderful. I thought the big bad of the book, you know, that dread trove of magical treasures they were trying to find, that was a really interesting concept for the book. I really enjoyed that. And I really loved how, yes, that was an important part of the plot, finding these three magical objects and stopping the human queen and all of those things were important, but not as important as witnessing Nesta's recovery and her trying to forgive herself and ask for forgiveness from others. Like that was the main point of this book. This main point was kind of the redemption of Nesta. And I really loved that on top of balancing her newfound powers from the cauldron and you know just trying to find her place in this new face society this book was about her and her inner journey and i like how the plot didn't take away from that that's why i really love this book and how much character development was valued in this book after you kind of have this healing act that i was talking about you have the first downfall because as i said before recovery is not a straight line and you have this kind of downtick where Nesta realized that people have been keeping stuff from her, so she decides to kind of explode. She runs down from the House of Wind, which is no easy task, and she goes to confront the people who've been keeping things from her, specifically Omren, who voted against her finding out that she and her newfound powers could make magical objects. And she tells Feyre the secret that everyone's been hiding from her, and it's a really hard secret. The baby that Feyre is pregnant with, which by the way, I, I started crying when I found that Feyre was pregnant, I started sobbing, um, but Nesta told Feyre that the baby she's carrying has the potential to kill her. And that was not something anyone wanted to come from Nesta. And it was this very low point, she runs away and Cassian takes her on this hiking trip where they just walk for days and they don't stop. And Nesta is kind of feeling the regret of her actions, which I think is the biggest indicator of character growth. She feels that regret for what she said. That's that's huge. Then you have her coming back to the House of Wind with a newfound 
push to achieve her goals and not be the person that she once was. So I love how this book was character driven. I loved the relationships. I loved seeing Rysand and Feyre together becoming expected parents, although with an air of tragedy, just knowing that the baby inside Feyre is Illyrian and human slash Fey woman cannot give birth to Illyrian children. I That devastated me. I was so sure that Feyre and the baby and Rysand were going to die. I thought they were all going to die because of the stupid bargain that Rysand and Feyre made that if one dies, the other dies. But thankfully, and I actually really loved this, I actually loved that it was Nesta holding all three treasure trove objects, the harp and the crown and the mask. And she was like, take my power, save my sister. And this is kind of the big moment for Nesta. She is making up for not taking care of her sisters when she was younger. She is giving back all that she took. And she saved Feyre, saved the baby, saved Rysand. And at the end, when like Rysand hugged her, she hugged him back. And it was just such a beautiful moment. And what I thought was the most perfect ending for this book is having Feyre, Elaine, and Nesta, and baby Nyx at their father's grave. That was full circle for me, having them visit the father's grave together because that has been what was causing Nesta so much trauma throughout the book is hearing that snap of her father's neck and having her come back to that grave after she feels mostly healed. I mean, obviously the trauma will never fade, but she's in a much better place that the three sisters go to their father's grave. And that to me was just the best way Sarah J Mass could have ended this book. And I thought it was wonderful. Now, I'm not sure if the next few books in this series are gonna be standalones. This felt and wrapped up like a standalone. I don't know if this is all we are getting from Nesta and Cassian's story. Maybe the next book will feature Elaine. Maybe the next book will feature more. I think that would be a really cool idea but we'll have to see but I am just so happy and content with how this book started where it went and where it ended so it is just an amazing five stars for me and you'll have to let me know with your comments down below did you like it were there parts you hated were there parts that just made you cry let me know all of your thoughts on this book down below but if you do have a spoiler in your comment just write a spoiler warning on the top of it so no one who hasn't read it will see it but I would love to discuss this this book with you so please leave your comments down below and that is it for this reading vlog thank you guys so much for coming along this amazing reading journey with me this book is probably my most anticipated of the year like I am just so happy right now with how the book turned out and I hope you guys are too if you read it but once again just leave me all your comments and thoughts down below I would love to hear if you have the same or differing opinions than me if you guys liked this video please don't forget to like subscribe and comment hit the notification bell to get updates on when I post I post every single week and I'll see you guys in my next video bye <laughs>